Welcome, new employee, to Office 51, the game about mythical monsters venting some inner rage on their last week of the job. My name is Max Willman, and today I'll be guiding you on how to play Office 51. The first thing you'll notice is that there are four character cards in the playing area. Each one of these are four of the employees here at Office 51. Let's take a look and get to know them. Here we have Mothman, our mailroom executive. We have Nessie, the head of communications. We have Kraken, our international sales associate. And Bigfoot, our senior accountant. Each one of these characters have a unique ability. Let's take a look at Kraken. See, Kraken has an ability where he can add one rage and draw again. Kraken can use this ability as many times as he wants, but he has to be careful because if he hits his boiling point, he has to draw a consequence card. So you might be asking yourself, what's a consequence card? What's an action card? What are all these cards? Well, the action cards are the cards you're going to be playing in the game, as well as the consequence cards if it comes to it. The action cards at the beginning of the game will be divided among each player. If you're playing online, however, they'll be placed at the center of the table where all players will, then, will first shuffle the deck and then draw the cards. When drawing the cards, you add the correct amount into your hand. Only you can see your hand. Of these options, these are the cards you'll be playing into your discard pile. On these cards you'll see two numbers, a title, an ability, and or a description. The two numbers represent rage and chaos points. The number on the left is the rage. The number on the right is the chaos points. Rage points, when played, will affect your rage meter. Chaos points are added to your chaos score, which will be tallied at the end of the game. The player with the most chaos points at the end of the game is declared the winner. On each card, you'll notice an ability. For instance, on Steal All the Printer Ink, the ability is all other players add one rage to their score. When playing this card, you would add one rage to your score, and all other players would add one rage to theirs, now setting everybody to two rage. And the description does not actually do an ability, but rather it's just a fun little memento of the card. Consequence cards are the cards you play when your rage hits the maximum amount. These cards have negative chaos points, which will affect your chaos score at the end of the game. These cards also have abilities and or a description. For instance, in Move to the Small Cubicle, the ability is to discard your hand to the middle of the play area and draw a new card. All cards that are discarded in the middle of the play area are considered out of use of the game. So these cards will not be tallied, they cannot be drawn, and they will not be scored. So starting the game, each character sets their tokens to 1, or the smiley face indicated on their character cards. Each player will then draw 3 cards to their hand. For instance, we have drawn Swap Shifts, Steal All the Printer Ink, and a Ruckus card. Ruckus cards are special cards that interact with each other and other players in the game. Ruckus cards play like any other action card, except their abilities are unique to the game. When playing a card, you would play them onto your discard pile. For instance, I will play Steal All the Printer Ink and place it on the discard pile. And because I played Steal All the Printer Ink, all other players now must add one rage to their score. So, as so, I will move up to one, as well as everyone else. And now that my turn is done, I will now draw one more card and add it to my hand. Now let's move on to Nessie. Nessie has a special ability where she can draw four cards instead of three. So at the beginning of the game, she would start with four cards. Let's say Nessie plays this Ruckus card. This Ruckus card, however, signifies that they must swap discard piles with another player. But before she does that, she must add the two rage to her score. Now Kraken and Nessie will swap discard piles, giving Nessie two points and Kraken eight. So tend to be careful with how you decide to swap your cards. However, if you had a bunch of consequence cards, this would be an ideal card to play. Now what happens if I hit my maximum rage? Well, you draw a consequence card immediately after hitting that rage. We have drawn move to the small cubicle again. This card subtracts six from our total score, and we must discard our hand to the middle of the play area and draw new cards. So we discard our hand, and we would draw four new cards as Nessie, and add them to our hand. 
Now our turn is over and it would go on to the next player. So when does the game end anyway? Well, the game ends when the last consequence card is played. Once the last consequence card is played, players will then add all the chaos points in their discard pile and their hand as well as their consequence cards. The player with the most chaos points at the end is declared the winner. Now if you're playing this online, I'm going to help you quick navigate and understand how to play online through Tabletopia. When you start the game, you get this handy little sidebar here that'll help you navigate and understand the controls. For instance, WASD moves our camera around on the horizontal and vertical axis. Scrolling with the wheel up and down will let you zoom in and out. If you want to look at an object, just hover over it and press the space bar. This will allow you to see the object in an easy to see manner. You can press Z to magnify where your mouse is hovering. You can also hold right click to change the angle at which you are viewing the play area. If you ever get stuck or lost on how to play, you can always press I. This will bring up the rules to help you determine how to play. I always remember as I for information if that is helpful to you. When interacting with objects, you hold left click to move and drop them. When drawing the cards you need, you can either draw them separately or draw them by right clicking, hovering over this hand icon, which is called take, and you can hover over the amount desired. For instance, I'll take three cards. Notice how they're all immediately highlighted? You can then take them to the bottom of the screen, which is your hand. Only you can see your hand. When selecting multiple objects, hold shift, drag over what you want, and drag them to where you need to. For instance, I'll just add them to the hand for now. When wanting to view something in your hand, you can press space and it'll bring up the full view. You can also as well flip the cards to show them to other players. Well, that's it for our game, and I do hope you enjoy it. From all of us here at Office 51, thanks for playing our game. And if you'd like to know more or get in touch with us, just leave a comment on this video and we'll get right back to you as soon as possible. Also, if you like the game, let us know by hitting the like button on this video. Lastly, we love hearing feedback from the community, so if you found any troubles or problems that came up in the game, please let us know in the comments below. And once again, thanks for playing. From all of us here at Office 51 to you,